think too and consider for the future. So, sorry. So just a quick background on me. Um, Christian introduced me as a journalist. This is part of the story. Researcher. Researcher. Researcher, yeah. Um, so I have a company called Tagaron Ventures. I do uh, marketing and business development for largely tech companies in Southeast Asia. Uh, right now, I am on an exclusive contract with Amphenica. <laughs> a company I'm very excited to be working with. Um, but then the, the other thing that I do is journalism, and I write for an outlet called Techonomy. Uh, they are a partner and an affiliate with Forbes, and uh, we've written a lot about the Philippines and the opportunities we see here. Um, it's something that I'm still covering, so if there are people in the crowd who are doing interesting things, please feel free to come up and introduce yourself. Slide. So, uh, the three trends that I see, uh, the mega trends in digital healthcare I want to talk about, uh, telemedicine, connected medical devices, and health informatics. Uh, I'm going to be going through these three uh, segments fairly quickly, talking about what they are and what they consist of. So, slide. We're going to start with telemedicine. So, telemedicine is basically the use of digital tools uh, to facilitate and streamline clinical care. So, there's a lot of different types of telemedicine that are emerging today. I'm going to talk about two. The first one, uh, slide please. So the first one is uh, real-time interactive telemedicine. So this is what people often think about when they think of telemedicine. This is basically using your phone to call up a doctor or have a chat with your doctor to have real-time care. Um, and there is a lot of really neat innovation happening in this sector, uh, companies coming up in Southeast Asia to uh, purpose this kind of technology for these markets. Next. And another kind of, uh, another kind of um, telemedicine that I want to talk about is storing forward. So this is not where you are talking in real time with a, a doctor or a nurse, but where you uh, create some kind of health data. Uh, maybe you fill out a chart, maybe you take an image, uh, and then you send it to a place for processing. And, and a perfect example of storing forward is, uh, is Eric's uh, teleradiology outfit in the Philippines. And this is actually an image from that very outfit. That's um, my office. Yeah, that, that's, that, that's his office. So um, that's really all I have to say about telemedicine. We're going to move quickly just because I think we're already a little bit over time. Um, there are other kinds of telemedicine as well, but we can talk about them afterwards if you're still interested. So slide. Uh, the next big area I want to talk about are connected medical devices. So um, if telemedicine is based on software, then this is kind of the hardware of, of, of uh, digital healthcare. Um, basically, making use of digital processes and signals uh, to make medical devices more, uh, more, more useful uh, in our digital age. So um, again, you can segment this all different ways, but I'm going to look at it in terms of two main types. There are the wearables, and then there are the implants and the adjustables. Slide, please. So the wearables are the things that are emerging now in uh, consumer technology. I think there's probably some people in here who have a, a Fitbit or, or one of these things on. But these are basically uh, consumer technologies that you wear. And typically, they are fairly inexpensive things that you can buy and get using right away. Um, on the technological totem pole, they tend to be kind of basic technologies. They're tracking basic vitals, sleep patterns, this kind of stuff. Uh, but these things are, are they're getting better, and uh, they are helping people self-monitor and improve their own health care um, themselves. Um, next slide. But the really crazy cool stuff that's emerging right now is in terms of uh, connected healthcare for, I call them implants and ingestibles. And so increasingly, um, devices that are getting put inside your body, things like pacemakers, um, or like in this picture, uh, nanotechnology that you can swallow in a pill or gets like, injected into your bloodstream. Um, this stuff is increasingly getting connected to. This is the frontier of, of digital healthcare. This is where a lot of the craziest innovation is happening. Um, so I'm personally looking forward to seeing what comes out uh, of this kind of research and development. Um, but that's all I'm going to say for now on this slide, please. And so the final big mega trend that I want to talk about in terms of digital healthcare uh, is health informatics. And this is kind of the big daddy unifying uh, mega trend because Everything that I talked about up until now produces huge amounts of data. So telemedicine, connected devices, and then basically every other kind of care that you receive in our digital age, producing data. And this data lends itself to 
uh, collection, organization, storage, and analysis. And um, once again, I mean, there's a lot of ways to slice and dice this. Uh, I have it in four broad areas that I want to highlight. Uh, moving on. So the first is uh, what we call subject-based systems. So these are the electronic <coughs> medical records, electronic health records, medical charts. These are uh, basically, you know, when you go into to see a doctor and he takes information, or you send something to a lab, the information about you is increasingly getting aggregated up into the charts, which then can be analyzed and shared. Um, these charts, they, they have a lot of promise in terms of making healthcare more efficient. Uh, they do raise all sorts of concerns in terms of privacy, uh, in terms of, in terms of, of safety. Um, and uh, right now, I think uh, most markets developed and developing are working out the details of how to make the most use of this kind of technology without violating people's privacy and harming people. Um, so it's an area that, again, it's in flux, but, uh, but quite interesting. Moving on. Uh, another area of health informatics or where IT systems are being applied to healthcare is in terms of admin systems. So this is like the least sexy part uh, of, of digital healthcare, but it's, it's really essential for the functioning of healthcare systems for things like operations and billing and claims processing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, increasingly that's going into IT systems into the cloud as well. Next up. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about public health apps. Uh, these fit kind of loosely into the category of health informatics. Um, but basically, uh, one way that people are using IT systems to improve healthcare is by uh, developing special purpose apps for NGOs and development organizations um, to help you know, with, uh, with their development campaigns. And so what I have is a picture here of a, a mobile health worker in Africa who's using a, a, actually not even a smartphone but a basic phone app to provide care in the field. Um, and typically these kinds of apps, uh, they, they work in two directions. Either you can use them to uh, help field workers provide care. So you give them basically forms to fill out, decision support tools, etc. And then another kind of public health app are the ones where they're being used to collect data. So where you, know, you can have, again, a field workers going out and finding information um, on sort of public health trends. And as an example, just something I saw earlier this year that was pretty neat was um, for dengue prevention in Thailand, there was an NGO that was basically, they made a, a special app where they took photos of, of still bits of water that then sort of analyzed the photos and could uh, count how many larvae they saw, and they can start predicting sort of how many mosquitoes there are going to be, um, and and make and anticipate sort of where dengue outbreaks might happen, so they can deploy resources in advance and take care of that. So um, very interesting area, lots of cool stuff happening. Um, slide, please. And then finally, uh, another kind of unifying um, area in, in all this is big data and analytics. So so once again. All this stuff is producing huge amounts of data, and really interesting things happen when you roll it all up and you start applying sophisticated algorithms and analytics tools to it. You start finding things that you, you didn't realize were the case. You start seeing patterns, and um, I gotta say, if I could go back and, and start over again, like uh, you know, I, I would probably study statistics and go in this direction because I think that this is where a lot of really awesome innovations are going to be discovered and occur. So, um, like I said, this is, this is just a really kind of quick gloss through what I consider to be some, some major megatrends in digital healthcare today. Final slide, which is my final point, uh, which is that I believe the most innovative uh, digital healthcare companies are those that are actually cutting across the categories that I mentioned, are the ones that are uh, basically solving problems at the intersection of these three areas. And two examples that are coming out of the Philippines today are, are two people who were speaking today. Uh, one being Amprenda, which is, which is really at the intersection of informatics and, and uh, well, other things that I can't talk about because we're at the end. You'll hear about it soon enough. Um, and and LifeTrack, of course, which is online learning and informatics and telemedicine and so on and forth sense. Uh, two really, really awesome companies that, that got their start here uh, in general. Uh, I think the Philippines is a really exciting area for, for uh, new innovations that have potential to scale across emerging markets. And so um, in addition to the work that I do with, with M Clinica, I am researching and writing about the space generally. So once again, if you're doing something cool or know somebody who is, feel free to introduce yourself. Tell me about it. Thank you. <laughs>